everyone. My name is Ms. Kavita and I'm from the Lilburn branch of the Gwinnett County Public Library. Welcome to the second session of Taste the World. In this session, we will take a look at common ingredients used to make different dishes in various countries, as well as some fun facts. There are about 200 countries in the world and each one has its own traditional food. Food is important for our nutrition but also has important cultural and symbolic meanings that make it more than what's just on our plate. Food is meant to be exchanged and shared with family and friends. This is an important experience in maintaining connections to one's cultural heritage. So let's take a trip around the globe and look at popular dishes, ingredients and traditions in various countries. Are you ready? Let's go! First, let's explore common ingredients and see how they are transformed into delicious dishes in different countries in different ways. Meatballs. Meatballs are probably one of the most widely eaten and adored foods in the world. Easy to make and affordable, meatballs are a classic in Italian food. Or are they? Here are a few fun facts about meatballs. When was the first meatball made? Well, nobody really knows when. Recipes go back to the Romans and the classic cookbook by Epicus includes a section on minces of meat with other ingredients. Italians do it differently. Italian meatballs are called polpette and are made with equal parts of meat and bread. Almost always made at home, polpette are the main course and is sometimes served in a light broth. No marinara or pasta. Spaghetti and meatballs with tomato sauce is a purely American invention. Fun fact number three. Meatballs were born out of necessity. The truth about meatballs is that they are a clever way to dress up tougher, cheaper cuts of meat. Meatballs also use up stale bread and so the meatball was traditionally a great way to stretch ingredients and serve a hungry family. Fun fact four. Where was the largest meatball made? Right here in the US. The Italian American Club of Hilton Head, South Carolina took the record in 2017 with a massive 1,757 pound meatball that took a year of planning and a week to cook. Special equipment had to be custom made for this. Most of this staggering meatball went to the local programs to feed the hungry. Every culture has a meatball. We may be most familiar with the Italian-American version of the dish, but there is also the Swedish schottbullar, Spanish albondigas, the Dutch bitterballen, Greek kaftiris, African skilpajis, and from India through the Middle East, the kofta. These are just a few examples of the widespread popularity of meatballs which are often made with lamb, pork and other meats. Now let's move on to the common vegetable, the cabbage. Did you know there are several types of cabbage and they can be cooked or eaten raw? A few of the common ones are green cabbage. The large round cabbage head has densely packed thick leaves. The outer leaves of the cabbage head are usually medium to light green and fade to pale green or white closer to the center. When consumed raw, green cabbage can have a slight peppery taste to it. However, cooking cabbage gives them a sweeter taste with less spiciness. The red cabbage could be one of the healthiest cabbages as it contains antioxidants. Cutting through a red cabbage head reveals tightly packed purple leaves due to its color, pleasant flavor and crunchy texture, red cabbage is a popular ingredient for coleslaw and salads. You can also pickle red cabbage to have as a side accompaniment for many meals. Napa or Chinese cabbage is a type of cabbage with an oblong shape. These Chinese cabbage varieties have pale green and yellow leaves and are thick white crunchy stem. The name Napa is actually vegetable leaves in Japanese. In most other countries, this cabbage is simply known as Chinese cabbage. Savoy cabbages tend to be smaller in size than the regular green cabbages. 
they slice well and keep their texture and color even during cooking. This is the perfect cabbage for using raw in salads or adding to stir fries. This type of cabbage has wrinkly leaves, but similar to other cabbage varieties, Savoy cabbages are a good source of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. After potatoes, perhaps no vegetable has kept more bellies full in places through winter than the cabbage. It's cheap, it's filling, and it's available long after a lot of other vegetables have gone into hibernation. You can stuff it, stock up your soup, fry it, shred it, or even pickle or ferment it. Let's take a look at some of the common cabbage dishes around the world. Sauerkraut is Germany's superfood and has been a staple in the German diet since the 1600s. It literally means sour cabbage in German and is made by combining shredded cabbage, salt and sometimes spices allowing the mixture to ferment. It can be purchased at the supermarkets and is also sold in delicatessens. If it's being used in casseroles, it should be rinsed before using. But it's also used on sandwiches like the Reuben and is an excellent source of vitamin B and C. Traditional Romanian food has been influenced over the centuries by Turkish, Hungarian, Greek, Siberian, Russian, Polish, French, and Italian cuisine. Romanian cuisine is delicious, diverse, and full of colors and flavors. And one dish that is a must at every important family event is the sour meal, arguably considered Romania's national dish. Sour meal can be described as stuffed cabbage rolls, a balanced mixture of minced meat, usually pork or beef, but veal is also used sometimes, with rice and pieces of traditional bacon, chopped onions and herbs rolled in sour white cabbage leaves and slowly cooked in clay pots in the oven, covered with cabbage brine, tomato sauce and pieces of smoked meat or traditional bacon and fresh thyme sprigs or pepper. Sour mayo is usually served with mamalika, often translated as polenta, that is a corn flour mush, or bread and sour cream. Colcannon, meaning white-headed cabbage, is a traditional Irish dish mainly consisting of mashed potatoes and cabbage with milk, butter, salt, and pepper. It can contain other ingredients such as scallions, leeks, onions, and chives. There are many regional variations to this dish and it's often eaten with boiled ham or Irish bacon. The Korean kimchi. This is a traditional fermented Korean side dish made of vegetables such as napa cabbage and Korean radish made with widely varying selection of seasonings including chili powder, scallions, garlic, ginger. A serving of this fermented side dish is packed with fiber, antioxidants, healthy probiotic bacteria, vitamin C, carotene, iron, calcium, and more. The cabbage is soaked in salt water for a few hours. Coarse rock salt is then rubbed in between the leaves. Red peppers are also rubbed in, and most kimchi has a lot of pepper in it. The radish is usually cut into long thin strips and added to the mix. A little sugar is added to help the fermentation process going. In traditional preparations, kimchi was stored underground in jars to keep cool during the summer months and unfrozen during the winter months. But did you know there are some really cool fun facts about kimchi? There are over 100 types of kimchi. Apart from the usual Napa cabbage, there is actually a wide range of kimchi like the white kimchi, water-based kimchi and daikon kimchi. But kimchi has also been to space. The first Korean astronaut brought kimchi up to space for both food and scientific research. The South Korean scientists were curious to find out if the bacteria in kimchi will have an effect when coming into contact with radiation found in space. And did you know a kimchi museum exists? Museum Kimchi Khan in Seoul will walk you through the kimchi stories from its early beginnings to how to make it yourself. It boasts of highly interactive features and activities to make the learning experience fun and, well, delicious. Coleslaw from the USA. This salad of shredded cabbage, known simply as slaw in many parts of the United States, is of Dutch origin. 
The word kolsla comes from the word kulsla, a conjunction of kul and sla, a shortened version of salad. It is a side dish consisting primarily of finely shredded raw cabbage with salad dressing, commonly either vinaigrette or mayonnaise. Coleslaw prepared with vinaigrette may benefit from a long lifespan due to pickling. Coleslaw is generally eaten as a side dish with foods such as fried chicken, barbecue meats, and may be accompanied by french fries, potato salad as another side dish. And it can also be used as a sandwich ingredient being placed on barbecue sandwiches, hamburgers, hot dogs, along with chili and hot mustard. Well, let's look at another common ingredient, the chickpeas. Small but mighty chickpea is becoming increasingly popular both as a snack and as a key ingredient in many vegetarian or vegan recipes. Eaten for as long as we can remember and centuries before that, there are many reasons that they've been favorite for so long. Chickpeas have lots of different names all over the world. Garbanzo beans, Bengal grams, Egyptian peas, chechi, and kabuli chana. Ground chickpeas have been used as a coffee substitute since the 18th century and are still commonly used as a caffeine-free alternative today. Chickpeas are packed full of good stuff. They're also high in protein, so are really a meat replacement for vegetarians and vegans. Let's now take a look at some popular dishes around the world that are used making chickpeas. The hummus, probably the most common, a simple dip, spread, or savory dish made from cooked mashed chickpeas blended with tahini, lemon juice, and garlic. It is popular in the Middle East and around the globe and also can be found in most grocery stores. The falafel. This is another popular fast food made of a mixture of chickpeas, fresh herbs, spices that are formed into small patties or balls and deep fried. Commonly served in a pita which acts as a pocket or wrapped in a flatbread, falafel is also frequently referred to as a wrapped sandwich with salad and sauces. Chickpeas are popular in Italian food too and are known as ceci. This Italian stew is a traditional Italian pasta and chickpea soup. The stew is full of big Italian flavors, intense vibrant tomato, leafy Tuscan kale, and a creamy broth made with Parmesan rind. Swimming in it all are the chickpeas and pasta, making it hearty and filling. Chana masala, also known as chole, is a dish originating from the Indian subcontinent. The main ingredient is a variety of chickpeas that are twice the diameter of typical chickpeas with a stronger flavor and firmer texture even after being cooked. They're cooked in a spicy onion and tomato gravy and can be eaten with basmati rice or breads like naan, roti or paratha. Ever tried crispy chickpeas? They are the perfect salty snack. You can combine them with savory spices like cumin, garlic powder and black pepper and roast them until crispy. They are like a healthy potato chip and you'll find that it's hard to stop crunching on them. So as we saw, chickpeas are so versatile and you can make a variety of soups, salads, sandwiches, burgers, tacos and much more. And it's super healthy too. Lastly, let's look at flatbreads and just like meatballs, every country has some type of flatbread that they eat. The common ones we see are tortillas. Tortilla is a general term used to describe a variety of flatbreads native to the Central Americas and Spain. Tortillas made in Central America are generally made with a special type of maize flour, which we call corn tortillas. Flour tortillas are made from the wheat grain and are more flexible due to the wheat gluten and can be made into larger sizes. Tortillas are used in a variety of dishes like tacos, burritos, enchiladas, and much, much more. The pita. Pita is a type of slightly leavened flatbread native to the Mediterranean region. These soft round breads often form a large interior pocket of hot air when exposed to the high temperatures during cooking. This unique pocket is useful for stuffing the bread with fillings such as meat, falafel, or vegetables. Pita can also be wrapped around foods like kebabs or euros or dipped into sauces like hummus and baba ganoush. Matzah. 
Matzah is an unleavened flatbread eaten by Jews during the Passover holiday. It is simply prepared by making a dough with flour and water, rolled out until thin, and then cooked at high temperature to create a crisp texture. Matzah can be eaten as is or crushed into matzah meal, which can then be added to a variety of recipes like wraps, pizzas, and much more. Lavash Lavash is a large, unleavened Armenian flatbread that is cooked against the hot walls of a clay oven. These breads are soft and flexible when fresh but dry to a brittle state, which point they can be stored for many, many months. Dried lavash can be softened by sprinkling with water, and like other flatbreads, it can be wrapped around meat or other fillings or used to sop up soups and stews. In the United States, lavash is often used to make wrap sandwiches. Naan and roti. Naan is a soft, pillowy flatbread native to India and other areas of West and South Asia. It is a levit bread cooked in a special oven called the tandoor and often contains milk or yogurt, which provide a unique flavor and a soft, tender texture. Naan is easily recognizable by its pillowy bubbles that form from contact with the hot oven. And this bread is also used to sop up sauces and stews or to wrap around meat and other fillings. Roti is another flatbread native to South Asia. Unlike naan, roti is not leavened and is made from wholemeal flour and is traditionally cooked on a flat or concave griddle called the tava. Items like coconut or green chilies can be added to the roti dough before cooking for added flavor. Lastly, let's take a look at focaccia. This is a leavened bread from Italy that can be flavored with a variety of toppings like olive oil, herbs, cheese, meat, or even fruit. Focaccia is often cooked on a stone hearth and has characteristic dimples that are made by pressing fingers into the dough before baking. This flatbread is used to make sandwiches, to soak up soups and stews, or made into a pizza-like dish with added toppings. In this last segment of our program, let's take a look at basic dining etiquette and fun facts from around the world. While here in America, we usually sit at the dining table for meals, other countries have other traditions. Sitting on the floor while eating is an ancient culture of many Asian countries like India, Japan, China, etc. This very simple ancient practice of sitting on the floor while eating has many health benefits. It is believed that it helps improve digestion, aids in mindful eating, improves body posture while keeping knee and hip joints healthy, and improves the circulation. What about eating utensils? Do you think everyone around the world uses a knife and fork or spoon? It's pretty widely known that Indians traditionally eat with their hands. However, this practice is not limited only to Indians. In the Middle East, it's not uncommon to eat with your hands. In Iran, bread is commonly served whole on the center of the table, sometimes directly on the table, and guests are expected to help themselves to the bread using their hands. Sometimes accompanying side dishes are also served at the center of the table. Tear small pieces of the bread and use the bread to scoop up the accompanying dishes. But make sure you don't lick or put your fingers in your mouth while eating with your hands. The use of chopsticks is common in Asian countries like China, Korea, Japan. It is also one that needs practice. To hold the chopsticks properly, first hold the first stick like a pencil and then the second stick between your thumb and ring finger. Your middle finger should be in between the two chopsticks acting as somewhat of a fulcrum. Slurp loud, slurp proud. While you probably consider slurping noodles to be rude, this is not the case in Japan. In fact, slurping is not only acceptable but encouraged as it's believed to improve the flavor of the noodles and is considered to be evidence that you enjoyed your meal. Clean your plate or don't. In Japan and India, cleaning one's plate is seen as honoring your host, expressing how much you enjoyed the meal. But this isn't true everywhere. In China, it's seen as a message that your host didn't feed you enough and is considered rude to not leave at least a little bit of uneaten food on your plate. 
Hmm. While dining in countries such as Portugal and Egypt, asking for salt and pepper is considered rude to the chef and is seen as a huge offense to whoever cooked the meal. What about tea time? When drinking tea in Britain, there are lots of rules to observe, many involving the teaspoon. Like when stirring tea, the spoon should never touch the sides of the cup, avoiding that annoying tinkling sound and possibly chipping fine bone china. Also, never leave the spoon in the cup. Place the spoon on the saucer like a proper tea drinker. Oh, and also remember, October 16th is World Food Day. So try and explore different types of food, traditions, and cultures from around the world. Feel free to check out books from the library, visit our catalog online, or come into the branch and browse for books in the food section. I hope you enjoyed this program and have a wonderful day.